The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is our gospel reading for this past Sunday, which was the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. We're looking at Mark chapter 7, verses 1 to 8, 14 to 15, and 21 to 23, where Mark was inspired to write, The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had been who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were unclean, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they came from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they watch. And they observe many other traditions such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with unclean hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain, their teachings are but rules taught by men. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to the traditions of men. Again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a man can make him unclean by going into him. Rather, it is what comes out of a man that makes him unclean. For from within, out of men's hearts, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. My dear friends in Christ, Oh, there are many times in the course of our lives when, when we, uh, other people, may make promises to God, when, when a person is confirmed, when a person is uh, married. People often make promises to God. Maybe they don't realize that ultimately it's to God, but on New Year's Eve, when people make New Year's Eve resolutions, ultimately that ends up being a promise to God. And, well, other times that people may make promises to God when, when a person is dealing with some sort of a severe health problem or just terrible times in the course of their lives. When things like that happen, then people often make promises to God. Oh, when there's a not in our area, but if there's a hurricane or if there's a tornado or other severe weather that's, that's approaching. Well, when things like that happen, then people can make statements kind of like this. Dear Lord, if you'll save me, my family, my home from this storm, I promise I'll go to church more regularly. I'll read my Bible more often. I'll pray more often. I'll work to follow the directions that are in the Bible, the directions that God gives me on how I should live. I'll get more involved at church. I'll stop doing this and that. And, oh, I think you get the idea. We make those promises, but how long do those promises last? Maybe promises like that are made with sincere hearts, but more often what ends up happening is, is as soon as the disaster, the trouble subsides or is gone, well then the promise is often forgotten. Today, what Jesus is doing through our reading is He's encouraging us who know the grace and love of God to live our whole life, to live our whole life in line with God's will, to work at living our life in line with God's will, to be true to God and his word. 
And he's reminding us that God isn't looking for mere lip service in our lives, that we just say the right things. He wants honor that comes from our hearts. Oh, our gospel readings for the last many weeks have all been dealing with time when Jesus was enjoying a little bit more prosperity prior to the confrontation that he had here with the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, Jesus enjoyed some pretty great prosperity. Crowds of people were coming out to hear him preach and, and to see the different miracles that he was performing. And, and well, the event that's kind of key with these readings is Jesus had just miraculously fed the 5,000 Men plus all of the women and children when he started out with just five loaves of bread and two small fish. And after that miracle, the people all wanted Jesus to be their bread king. They thought, oh, this is great. If we could have him as our king, well, he could take care of us, be our bread king, take care of us, give us the food and everything that we need, and maybe he can even free us from the Roman Empire. That's what they were looking at. But when Jesus explained to them that his kingdom was not of this earth, that it wasn't to be a bread king, it wasn't to free them from Rome, well, then what happened, as he was saying, he was a spiritual king instead, that the people started to abandon him. And the Jewish leaders, they started to attack Jesus more vigorously. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law that are referred to in our reading today, they traveled about 80 miles by foot probably in order to get to see Jesus. And that's 80 miles, that's from Jerusalem, from, from, Jer from Jerusalem to Capernaum. But they came there not to hear God's word, but they came because they felt threatened by Jesus and his message. They wanted to attack or discredit Jesus. They wanted to try to somehow or other make Jesus look as if he was opposing the Jewish religion, when actually Jesus, of course, is the true Jewish religion. He's the promised Messiah, the one promised to Adam and Eve, to Abraham, to King David. And really, they should have been looking for him, but instead, they didn't like his message. They didn't like to hear that they were the sinners that they were, who needed a savior, and that well, without him, they would be doomed to eternal punishment. They didn't like that message. The Jewish leaders, they concocted their own religion in which a person would basically try his best to keep all of the Old Testament laws, the Mosaic laws, and if they kept those laws, that then they should be acceptable by, to God and, and worthy of eternal life. Well, the, tell, the teaching of salvation by grace through faith alone, that was something that was foreign and offensive to the Jewish leaders, largely to the Jewish leaders. I'm sure there had to be some who were believing children of God because of the scriptures working on their hearts, but the teaching of salvation through faith, offensive to those Jewish leaders. And, and because it was offensive to them and they didn't teach that message to the people, that message was offensive also to many of the Jews. When Jesus taught that we are helpless without God, well, that was something that was offensive to the that hurt the Pharisees' pride. And when we hear of that same message, that we're sinners, that we on our own would deserve God's wrath and punishment, it's no surprise that that would 
hurt our pride as well, our sinful pride as well. And it's no wonder that there are so many people today who often accept the idea that if a person, that a person will go to heaven, if he tries his best, if he tries his hardest, or, or maybe just tries a little bit harder than other people to keep God's laws, that idea lets a person keep his pride. Keep his pride. The Jewish teachers, they had their pride so hurt by Jesus' message that they felt that they had to attack Jesus. They weren't true to God and his word. And here we'd say, may God help us always to be true to God and his word. And what does that really mean? Not to trust in ourselves, but to humbly confess our sins and acknowledge that on our own we would deserve God's wrath and punishment. But then to be true to God and his word also means to rejoice in our Savior's forgiveness, in his grace, his mercy, and love. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, when we see the Jewish leaders fighting against Jesus because they didn't appreciate his message, help us to see that our sinful nature and our sinful pride likewise doesn't appreciate the preaching of the law, which shows us our sin and our unworthiness before God. But help us when our pride has been knocked down to always be true to God and his word and to humbly confess our sins and to rejoice in the forgiveness of sins that we have in Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.